Okay, hello everyone, welcome. We have a wonderful experience for you here today. We are doing the WEC Perspective and we're hearing from two incredible people who have experienced WEC this year in two different ways. So Moselle was there live and Carolyn um, experienced it through the virtual platform. And we want to hear from their perspective, what worked, what maybe didn't work, what they would recommend and how um, all of this information can potentially help us moving forward in our own events. So what we're going to do is I'm going to first and um, Moselle, you are able to share if yes. you need to. Okay, I'm gonna move this into a speaker view for you all and um, just do an intro of both of you and then we'll bring Moselle on first, okay? So these intros, I could go on for days for, with these two amazing presenters, but I'm just going to pull out some of the key points. Moselle Goodwin, CMP, HMCC, Strategic Account Management Professional, SPIN 40 over 40, 2019, uh, Global Account Professional with 20 plus years in the medical education programming arena. And Moselle also leverages, as we heard in the beginning here, her Avon business to provide personal care items for meeting attendees or clients as swag. Thank you, Gis. Um, she's been a speaker, panelist, moderator and on the advisory board for Pharma Forum. She's very involved with MPI as a member since 1997, as a president, past president, uh, two years on the inaugural MPI MD Global Advisory Council and currently serves as a member of the MPI Global Diversity and Inclusion Committee. And that is just a portion of Moselle's bio. And we have just a portion of Carolyn Browning's bio. She is also a CMP. She's a CMM, HMCC, and her company is Meeting Needs LLC. Carolyn Browning is the owner and chief solution strategist of Meeting Needs. She began her career in the meeting industry on the corporate side, handling customer events and sales meetings at both Sprint and GE Capital, and then went out on her own and never looked back. Passionate about meetings and education, Carolyn seeks to share her knowledge and experience with others, leading CMP prep classes, speaking to groups about how to plan better meetings to engage and inspire audiences, facilitating meetings and retreats, and so much more. Carolyn is also a volunteer and someone who likes to give back to the industry. She's held several board positions for MPI Westfield chapter, including a two-year term as president. And she happens to also be a devoted Disney fan. So feel free to ask her any questions about any of that. But we're going to dive into Moselle's experience of WEC Live. Moselle, would you like to jump in with your slides or you want to just come up? Um, I'll give a little preface first. Hello, everyone. Um, it was a very, very good experience. Uh, I want to tell you how I had gotten there because there was so many people who did not go, of course. So um, I was writing a grant for the chapter for education. And when COVID hit, I was like, well, they're not gonna, that program's not gonna happen. Um, so then I realized they kept putting out messages for every anyone who needed help, whether it was with membership, um, education. So I applied to attend and wrote a grant for myself to attend WEC. And lo and behold, I was given $2,500 um, towards hotel, registration um, and travel. So that really helped. I really had a little bit out of pocket. So that really helped. And there were several other people I met while I was there who were there on grants. So they've done a great job with that. Um, I'm going to go right into the slides now. I just want you to know how I got there because so many people are like, oh my gosh, you really actually went. So um, I, it took a lot for me to say yes at the, I mean, I, I registered, but I had up until like a week and a half prior to back out. And at that point I said, no, you know what, I'm going to go because I want to see what the experience is and then actually bring it back and let everyone else know what that experience was like. So I do have to do a testimonial video as a scholarship recipient. And I'm also going to submit something to the meeting professional um, on the experience as well. So this was the first step in helping me get there. Okay, so I'm going to share my, well, I'm gonna pull up the slides first then share my screen because that can be a nightmare. No, no, I guess I can't do that in that order. Sorry, there we go. Okay. 
So this deck was made so that you have text on it and the photos so that you can actually um, have it as a takeaway and keep it to refer to. So um, I know you're going to be paying a lot of attention to the photos. Don't worry about the words. I'm going to tell you what it says. I'm going to read them and give a little more information. So this was how to meet safely during a global pandemic. My title, um, all the some of the photos are from the MPI um, distributed and then other photos I had taken while I was there. So pre-conference communications and materials were excellent. Um, there was a, like I said, there was a lenient cancellation policy for those who did not feel comfortable because registration started, you know, back in like March or or April, and then um, people were signing up, but then they were also waiting to sign up. So they were very lenient, understanding that things kept changing. So that was very good. Um, so you kind of started feeling comfortable from the very beginning and understood where they were coming from. Um, the duty of care communication was in writing. It was by video, it was by email, it was by every type of social media that I'm sure some of you saw. So they really were getting the word out that they were really trying to make it the safest that they could. There was um, a video from the hotel general manager, um, just about every MPI executive level um, on the board did a separate video um, detailing out um, the steps they were going through to make sure that it was very safe for everyone and that they did understand people had concerns. And if you did have concerns and you wanted to come but weren't sure, um, there was a number or someone for you to call. So that was very open and um, they really put out the message that they understood we needed to be safe. The registration materials were all sent in advance. So they were really trying to make it a contactless event. So this was my registration box. Um, at the top left, it's a little hard to see, but it was a little a pack of hand, sanit um, hand wipes. And where it says Los Cabos, that was um, a little tote, fold up tote bag. And then there were sunglasses, not that I ever got to use them because we hardly ever went out. The only time I really went outside was when we had a fire drill during a program I was in. Um, and then the bottom left is, I don't know, I didn't, I forgot the exact name of it. Carolyn probably knows. Um, it's the little thing that you use to open a door, you yeah. can use to hit the elevator button, anything like that. Um, and then the bottle is a hand sanitizer. There's my name badge. There is a um, cup koozie and then that, with a smiley face, that was our mask to wear. <laughs> so they really kind of thought of everything. And there was even a video by um, the meeting moderator facilitator, um, Dina, who is one funny mother is her tagline and her website. Um, she actually did a video where she's going through the box and seeing all the things and saying funny things about it. And that was another way to make sure you knew to look for it so you didn't miss it. And um, they gave you the opportunity if you weren't gonna be available to receive it, to let them know so they would make sure and have it on site for you and not mail it and you would miss it. Um, there were hand sanitizing stations everywhere. So that was pre-conference. Then once we got there, um, this was the famous sign. Don't ask me how I got one. I may have to kill you if I tell you. Um, so um, really good about being compliant. Um, strong partnership with the hotel. The hotel did a wonderful job. Um, when we first arrived at the front, there was someone from Grapevine CVB who was sponsoring and hosting um, there to welcome you. And she actually took a picture with me later. Um, and they were, Throughout the meeting, they were staffed in places to keep the traffic going and also checking to make sure people were keeping their mask on. And they were very helpful with moving people and getting them to the right place. Um, there, there was a strict enforcement on site. That's why I say shout out to the mask monitors. This young lady was actually in one of my meeting rooms and she went over to a person and said, excuse me, you need to put your mask on. Um, the person was, you know how you kind of come in, you sit down, you're looking for something and she was rifling through her bags or something and she must have um, pulled it down or something at the time. And she did go over and say, excuse me, you have to keep your mask on. Um, the rule of thumb was if you're not eating or drinking, you need to wear a mask. And that was again, strictly enforced in every meeting room, even in all of the shared, the um, common space during breaks and what have you. Um, all transportation before getting on any transportation, you needed your mask. The signs you see were on the floor. So they, as you were going to the convention area, all of these signs were there. And um, I think I got most of them, but these are the most important. So there were reminders everywhere um, for you to make sure that you were doing what you're supposed to be doing is what I call it. 
Okay, now um, this is what a lot of people are worrying about, well, not worrying, but um, asking about is the daily health check and how did that work? So each day you would, um, if you signed into the conference app, each day you will automatically get a text message and it would ask you these questions. And if you answer the questions that you didn't have any of the symptoms, you would get this green thumbs up um, by text as well, so that you had that with you to show that you passed that portion of it. If you didn't have the app or you had forgotten, on the way to the convention area and in the convention area as well, because you couldn't get into any meetings without your wristband, the sign on the left was there so you could just scan it and get the questions and fill it in. Another stop also had a facial recognition where you would, um, it would actually take your temperature. So I saw one of those, I think that was kind of a demo from the company I, um, Cloud Touch that had it, um, but I did see that one. So each day we would get this health check. Once you had your green thumbs up, as you walk to go to any meeting space, there was another reg table um, where they would, you had to show them your, your thumbs up and they would give you a wristband for the day. So each day the color changed. So anytime you went into a meeting space, you went onto a bus for transportation to an event, you had to have that day's colored wristband for access. And that was strictly enforced as well. Okay, so now when it comes to food and beverage, I call it let them eat spaced. Um, this was the CMP, CMM breakfast and you'll see the red bandanas on the tables used as place settings at every event, the general session, um, all food and beverage, even the meeting rooms were set up and everyone I went in was set up in rounds and there were only four tapes, four seats, four um, settings per table. And that was throughout the conference that I saw. The only one that was different was I believe the lunchroom had some um, banquet um, tables instead of uh, um, the the schoolroom tables instead of the banquet rounds tables. Um, and those were also spaced out with still only about four, maybe five people per table. Um, general session, something I found very interesting was a good idea, I something I hadn't even thought about that actually we've used it in the past is when you sat down, there was a tent card at each place and you were to write your name on it and you left it there. So if you walked away and you're know, coming back to general session later, it was so everyone would just go back to their same seat. So you weren't used, you know, I want to call it contaminating, um, you know, several seats in the general session, which I thought was a very good idea. Um, so you would always come back to the same table and the same seat um, because they were cleaning up in between, but it's so it's just safer, I think, the way that they handled it, which was very good. Um, again, no one could enter without a, a mask or their proper um, wristband for health clearance. Food and beverage was served either buffet, sorry, it was either served like here, um, everything was individual, um, or served, uh, ser sorry, served. Um, Confused. I'm looking at the words and I'm saying it, but I'm meaning something else. So it was served um, by wait staff, or it was done buffet, but the buffet that the buffets I went to had a staff member there handing you something that was pre-packaged. Um, and it kind of like you picked up your entree, you picked up your salad, you picked up your dessert, um, that sort. Um, so that was done very well. I did hear of one luncheon that I missed because I was in a meeting and they served us lunch there. And that was kind of like a everything in a pre-packaged and, and they gave us a bag with everything in it. Um, I understood that there were a lot of buffets. However, um, it wasn't done as good as the other ones following. Mm -hmm. So they may have had some lessons learned from that first one um, and then made sure that everything the following days were done a little bit more stringently. Okay. Um, this is, I really have these pictures because the food just looked really good and it tasted good too. <laughs> so this was the Las Vegas luncheon because Las Vegas is where the program will be hosted next year. Um, they did a, a wonderful job. The hotel was really good. So this again, these were all served. Either they were already there when we sat down or they were served by wait staff once we sat down. So there was you know, no buffet, no lines, don't worry about spacing. Um, the only what I call iffy area was during the break service, the hot beverages 
Um, the urns had kind of like a soda fountain mechanism to push your cup against, so you didn't have to touch anything. So that was great. However, when you went to, you know, get your sugar, your cream, whatever, that was a little, um, I don't want to say crowded. It's just that there could have been two or three people there trying to get in a small space, trying to, to get that done. And I think if they had just moved that to another table a little more spaced out that may have been a little bit better um that that and at the closing night reception when we first walked in there were two items that were displayed and there was one wait staff kind of walking around but it was a grab and go station all of the others at that reception were at stations where wait staff was behind a plexiglass and they were putting out um, individual pieces as people came up they put out a few and that was it and then everything was held back be, uh, behind the plexiglass with them until those were gone and more people walked up so that was that looked a lot safer um, where you weren't worried about other people touching something and putting it back which is what could have happened in the instance with the two items when we first walked in so those are the only two things that I experienced that made me question something otherwise everything else was done very well um, the open and closing receptions, you know, of course, Fabulous Entertainment. I had to get a photo of this band on the left with the, the horn section with their crazy wigs. Um, even when everyone's out on the dance floor at these events, you know, they're large, they're large venues and we didn't fill the space, but that was good. We weren't supposed to fill the space. So that was the point. Um, everyone was spaced out. Every single person had their mask on. I was looking around. I did not see anyone without their mask. Um, the wait staff who didn't wear masks, they were behind plexiglass and that was the whole time. So the first venue on the right is um, the opening night reception and we were in an area in downtown Grapevine um, near the train station. So they used actually a rail train um, to host some of the event and they were all of course as you know all these receptions they have different stations different little action things to do. Um, a lot of it was the history and learning about how things happen in, in the old west, I went to a place where they showed how they how the original tinsel that we see on Christmas trees was made and I have one. Um, it was actually made from, they would literally have a sheet of metal and make thin slices and then twist it. So that was pretty interesting. And I also made a metal luggage tag that you actually pound the, the letters into it. So it was really interesting. Someone was stomping grapes, um, all kinds of things are going on, but again, people were being careful. And this was just, I just put this just to prove I was actually there um, in the hotel at the bottom where it says the MPI with logo um, that was inside the, the Gaylord. And so as you walk down this long corridor to go to most of the rooms, that was what you saw first. So that was great. It was a great picture opportunity for everyone to um, get done. On the left, um, I'm calling that Mr. Grapevine. He was on stilts. I finally figured out the how the person was in there. They were on stilts and he was walking around the whole night. So Grapevine is known for its grapes and its wine. So that's why I'm calling him Mr. Grapevine. Up top is the young woman who was at the front who greeted and she was nice enough to get in a picture with me. Um, and I kept seeing her throughout the conference as well. And then on the right, the wish you were here. I'm glad they had that because I did wish that a lot of my um, Westfield and other um, suppliers that I work with throughout the years who the only time I really get to see people is at WEC. So um, being the only one from Westfield, it was a little weird, but it was also interesting to see the dynamic of having a smaller group there. I was able to really connect with the um, MPI Global Diversity and Inclusion Committee because none of us, well, not none of us, but most of us had not actually met in person before we've been on call since January. So that was really good to bond with them. Um, and that was really it. That's all I have. I just thought that this quick little. Um, this is great, Moselle. Thank you so much. You an idea of what happened. Yeah, you know what? We, we love that you are able to share the details and the images. The pictures really help a lot. Um, I'm, what I'm going to do is I, I have a feeling based on what you were talking about, so much emphasis right now with a live part of the event is on safety. So mm -hmm. I'm going to go to Carolyn first because she has a time constraint. And then I want yeah. you to think about, if you don't mind, um, any specifics about what you loved about the content as well and the engagement that took place um, in the live 
portion of WEC. You did an amazing job on this. Thank you. Carolyn, share with us what it was like from the virtual perspective, please. Surely. Um, so I wasn't as fancy as Moselle. I don't have slides. Um, I decided to attend. I know you're trying to show me up. Um, I decided to attend because I wanted to see what MPI was going to do from a, a hybrid perspective. Um, so a, a couple things. The, the platform they used was Freeman's Online Event Pro. I thought it, for the most part, it was very good um, and clean in terms of a visual, but I did think it was a little clunky. And I, there were other people who I could see were having the same challenges because you would have, you had your on-screen image of what was going on and then there was a chat box, but there were, especially for the general sessions, there were two different ways to get in. You could be in the four hour chunk or you could be in individual talks. So the chats didn't always sync up. So that was a little clunky. Um, you also weren't sure if you should put your question in chat or in Q and A, which I, is always a, a challenge on, on Zoom as well. Um, and to start off the day on day one, virtually, they had to, not, not quite a half an hour, but almost a half an hour of technical glitches where all of a sudden their feed went out and we're all sitting there on chat going, okay, this is a great way to start. But I think because everyone just jumped in at once that, um, but then they, they came back in. They did a lot for the virtual audience and there was a lot of content that was exclusive to the virtual audience, which I thought was, was nice. They would have, uh, they had a, an interview area actually two different interview areas that were sponsored, I think by Al High and somebody yeah. else, where we would have um, interviews and, and topics of discussion that was just for us, which was nice. Um, they addressed a lot of the challenges. So on day two, they talked about the technical challenges they had on day one. Um, they talked about some of the, um, that the missteps they had, because on, on day one, there was also a, in the general session, they had a section called Ask Annette. So Dina, the, the uh, MC was interviewing Annette Gregg, who's one of the VPs, and it was supposed to be lots of input and questions from the audience. Well, Dina wasn't getting the right feed. So she wasn't seeing questions, even though people were asking questions. So they, they riffed and they punted and they did a great job. But on day two, they explained to us, well, what ha was happening on the back end. So I thought that was good. Um, I like the fact that they, so somebody in, in the background was monitoring the chat and the questions and comments that we had virtually, because at one point I could see in the chat where people were saying when we were watching the general session, they were saying it would be great to see the ballroom. And two seconds later, the shot changes and we got to see what the ballroom looked like. So they, they did a good job of, of monitoring that. Um, so the, the platform when we were watching general sessions and that kind of stuff was through Freeman and that was a, a stream and you could watch it live or all of a sudden you could see it on DVR. So it was a little delayed. Any of the breakout sessions, you would click on them from the platform and then you would go into a Zoom room. So I think that seems to be the standard that breakout sessions are done via Zoom. Um, I liked with the breakout sessions that they were for the digital audience. So almost every presenter who was, who well, any presenter who was asked would do it their presentation twice. So they did it for the in-person audience and then they did it separately for the digital audience so that we had that interactivity. And they explained, and this was something that they explained during those interview times, that it was partly a financial decision because that way they didn't have to have an extra tech in the back of each room with a camera. Um, so it was partly financial and then also for interactivity so that that digital audience that we got that, that time um, with them. So that was nice. Um, it was nice to see in the general sessions that they had and so it, I guess it's not really a prop, but on the side, they had this vertical screen um, that looked like a phone and it actually was having, every so often you could see the chat coming up. 
They also had times where they specifically asked people who were online to pull their camera feed in. So they had some magic going on in the background so you could see some people at home. So it was nice to, to have that inter interactivity. Um, what else? It was, I have to say it was exhausting. Um, it was three days and I almost felt like I was there in terms of being drained um, because it's hard to multitask. It's hard not to multitask, but it's hard to focus on more than one thing at once. Um, so you're really trying to watch the screen and watch what's going on, but especially in a general session, you're watching and then I'm over here and I'm doing emails and then I'm checking Facebook and I'm ordering on Amazon and but I was exercising too. So you're, you're doing multiple things at once. Elaine, I really was it's like, this is time to do some squats. Um, but it's, it's, so you have that luxury, but then you're saying, oh, I really should be paying attention and, and in the moment. Uh, I like that there were some short stretch breaks. So in between the sessions, when we had our digital time, um, there were Galveston sponsored some stretch breaks. So it was chair yoga and, and that kind of stuff. They did a great job incorporating the sponsors with short videos and some interviewing. Um, it was interesting to see from our perspective that sometimes speakers actually were talking with their masks on. So they were respecting the speaker's comfort level. So even if there was distancing and they did a great job of distancing, some speakers wanted to, to wear their masks. So I thought that was nice that they did that. Um, the chat was busy. Uh, the, client, the pricing. So I, I, I am gonna, that's an elephant in the room. So Moselle mentioned how she got there. So the pricing for the digital was $2.99. And when that first came out, I was like, Ugh. Um, I got a discount because of part of my um, work that I do with MPI. So I got $50 off. Um, so I said, okay, this is an investment in me. I want to see how they're doing it and what they're doing and the education. Um, but then you keep hearing about, because we saw in the chat, all these other promotions that were coming on. So some people got a flash sale for $150 and I'm like, I would have liked to have paid 150. So I think that the fact that there was a variety of different pricing, especially when you found out about it was um, kind of uh, disconcerting. There was a section that you could have participated in. There was appointment setting and visiting the exhibitors and this connection time. I did not take advantage of any of that because to me as a digital attendee, I wanted to see what was going on live and I wanted to grab as much education as I could. Um, the nice thing is that I still have access to some but not all of the sessions that I couldn't have attended because not all the speakers allowed a recording, which I understand. Um, but there were people who were doing the appointment setting and visiting the exhibitors. So I, I don't have a perspective on that. Um, I think the statistics that they had, there were some matches because they, they did have stats, which I think were pretty cool that they tell you how many people registered, you know, there were 17 countries represented. Um, there were matches and appointments and, and that kind of stuff, but that was something that was not of interest to me. Um, that's I mean, I have a lot of other notes, but questions, comments. I have a we question here, Carolyn. Uh, did you get an opportunity to network with some other attendees? I know you said you did have breakouts, but what about uh, just actual networking? Um, it was basically in, in the chat. Um, there was the opportunity for this appointment setting and you could have gone into this digital connection area and look for people. I did set up a profile but honestly, I was exhausted and trying to work on a conference. So um, the one thing I did do was there were two uh, breakouts that I went to that were phenomenal. And I, um, I saved the chat and then I looked up all the people who were in the room and I connected with them on LinkedIn. So that was the one, one thing I did, but I didn't do any of that. And, and I, I missed the, 
seeing people and grabbing a business card or, you know, swapping, swapping phones. That's probably not a good thing, but <laughs> sharing information. Um, Carolyn, yeah, I, have so that, a, I have a quick question on that. Um, one, first of all, I think that it's really important for our uh, listeners who, who are watching the recording later to, to recognize that what Carolyn's talking about, what she did is so important for everyone to do when we are in that virtual world is that it's our responsibility to follow up afterward. And that is a huge part of the networking. So I just want to draw attention to that. Um, also, from a speaker standpoint, what did you think of the speakers who kept their masks on? Did you have any trouble hearing them? And with the lack of facial expressions, did it in any capacity um, keep you from being able to get the full feel of it? I didn't think so. I think people were doing a good job. They must be listening to who was at Tyra Banks and they were smizing. Um, it, it was different, um, but I, I think, you know, they were mic'd, so you didn't really have too much of the, the muffling. Um, I just thought that it was, I, I liked the fact that they respected people's um, preferences. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And one quick question for you before um, I know you need to leave and David has a question and then I'll move to you, Moselle, for a question. Um, actually, David, why don't you go first? Sure. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Moselle. And thank you, Carolyn. Great, great recap. Learned a lot. Question for Carolyn as it pertains to the financial aspect of the uh, hybrid versus the, uh, or actually the hybrid model itself. You had mentioned that there was a financial decision made to eliminate the technicians and have, um, you know, uh, one pre-recorded and, and one live. So could you, you know, for, for those who are in the budgeting process of meetings, particularly in the hybrid space, elaborate a little bit more on what planners should anticipate moving forward? So actually, let me let me just um, clarify. So it wasn't pre-recorded and live. So if they would have some, but not all presenters would present to the live audience. And then later in the day, they would do the same presentation to the virtual audience. Got it. So I thought that was, was nice because we got that in-person touch point um, but because what they decided to do was not have that because they had a lot of technicians and stuff they needed in the general session room. So they didn't want to have that for the breakout rooms as well. Yeah, thanks for clarifying that. Okay. It made all the difference. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, and, and what it was cool that they actually, in addition to that, they, I'm going to say they, they walked the talk because there were quite a few presenters who were presenting from home. Um, at least the, for the sessions that I went to. So I thought that was cool. I don't know if they did that session for the live audience from home as well. Um, but, you know, it, there was one where there was um, some MP, uh, MPI, MPI Scandinavia chapter. They were doing it from Scandinavia. Um, one of the guys was in Texas. Um, so I guess his comfort level, he didn't want to come. Um, I had somebody who was in Florida uh, who presented? So I thought that was nice. That let's let's just totally make it hybrid if we if we can. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And uh, one quick uh, comment: What was your favorite content part? Oh well, there were a couple, but one that I, I wrote down that that Heather would love. Um, I can't pronounce her name. Shabam Moselle, do you remember her? She was the one of the first presenters in the general session. Um, from Soul Pancake is her company, and she talked about joy. Oh yeah, I'm gonna um, say the joy. I will call her the joy woman. <laughs> the joy woman. So she had had like four yeah. things in your in your joy toolkit, and I'm like, this is totally got. I thought of Heather as well. <laughs> yeah, expressing right, gratitude. The joy girl. Yeah, so expressing gratitude that was her number one thing in your joy toolkit. So she was awesome. Um, and then there were two sessions that I went to. One was about the engagement enigma. So it was talking about engaging audiences on the virtual level with the event nerd. He was phenomenal. And then I had a session on LinkedIn, which at first I'm like, oh, do I need to go to another session on LinkedIn? But Terry Sullivan was the speaker and he was, I don't know if he's from New York, but he was just rapid fire, rapid fire whip. And I took a ton of notes and I have a lot of work to do. <laughs> <laughs>
Outstanding. Carolyn, I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate that. And, and I loved how, you know, you definitely kept it very balanced with this was good. This is why they did this. This is what I would change, you know, and so very, very helpful. Thank you so much. And now, okay. Moselle, I do want to come back to you with the, with the question about, you know, engagement. And now actually I have another question that Carolyn led to. Did you see some of the speakers she was talking about that were doing it virtually? Did did they have people on a big screen or was that solely for our virtual attendees? And then I don't know, Elaine and David, if you have questions too. Yeah, my experience, I didn't, I, you know, they had MPI TV is what Ally hosted and there was always someone there, but they, those were interviews. They weren't, you know, people doing sessions. So, but they had some other rooms in an area um, that I knew they were doing some recording. So I'm thinking maybe that's where those were going on. Um, cause I saw some signs that said like recording in the session or something. So that could have been where they were going on, but going to the live, I, um, breakouts and such, I didn't see that anything that I went to was totally live and getting back to Carolyn's point about the mask. I don't remember any of the sessions I went to with a speaker kept on their mask, but, um, they're at the stage between the stage and the first row of seating was quite a distance. It was They made sure it was quite a distance and that way if the speaker wanted to keep their mask off to be clearly heard, there wasn't an issue of flying particles, so to speak. <laughs> yeah, I have to say that the, the last day um, for the, I don't know if it was during the luncheon, no, when, when the guy from Vegas sang that was a lunch. Yeah, that was the last so they, day. So they they broadcast the the performance to everybody. So we got to see it as well. So I was kind of I was impressed that they had somebody singing. Um, so I'm like, they must have had it set up so there was a big buffer so that you're not mm -hmm. sharing with everybody. <laughs> he was were there awesome. any sessions that were based on safety as it pertains to? COVID, health standards. I mean, we talked a lot about what had been practiced, but uh, were there any specific sessions for meeting planners to learn more about? Did you go to that, Carolyn? There definitely was one. I remember well, on there, the calendar. There was a lot. Like, yeah. There was a lot, a lot that was specific to COVID. So I'm just looking at, you know, F and B in the new world. Mm -hmm. um, recalibrating your business. Um, but then there was definitely, there was some, they were, they were talking about safety and protocols. They were talking about a lot of legal and contract issues, which, sure. you know, is, is, um, is the thing I'm, I'm looking at. Yeah. yeah. Force majeure on your contracts, mastering engagement. Um, but the, and then they, they did talk about, there were some things about safety, but I didn't go to those because I'm, I hate to say it, I'm kind of safety out. Yeah, that's why I, I think while I was there live, I was gonna go to the stuff I really, really needed. And that I'm like, and I, I'm hoping that I get access to recordings after because there was several sessions going on while I was there and I can only go to one at a time. So I had to pick and choose or I had meetings. So um, I know pre the previous years after the conference, you've always had access to some online stuff. Mm -hmm. So- Sounded great. I better have access this year too. <laughs> And the one thing I thought was interesting was that when they when they dismissed people from the general session room to go to meals, you must have had color coded badges because they would dismiss you by color so that only a certain number of people were leaving the room at a time. And I don't know if you were like the reds went out this door and the greens oh, went out this door. I can tell you what that was. So those tent cards I told you on a table, they each had a dot on it. They had a colored dot on it. So Eat, that's how they did with the sections. And that reminds me, that was one other thing they, that I thought was a good idea was um, they had one big meal room. So they went to the same place for meals every day. So there wasn't this constant setting up, trying to create a different experience. You know, it is what it is. We need to be safe first. So every day when it was lunchtime, you went to the same place, except the last day, because it was the Vegas luncheon, um, it was in the general session room because there were no more... Um, that was it. That was kind of the end of the conference. So there, there were a few more courses after that, but that was really kind of it. So they had that in the general session. 
Do we have any other questions? Elaine, did you have something else, David? Question from Moselle. Moselle, you had mentioned that uh, one of the events was held at a train station nearby. What was the transportation like to get the attendees to the train station? I'm glad you reminded me of that because um, there were several times we had to transfer. So that was the opening reception. That was in downtown Grapevine and they used shuttle buses. And um, in the information in the know before you go, it explained that there would be buses and it explained that if you want to sit in a seat by yourself, sit in the aisle. So you knew that no one, so to let them know you want to sit by yourself. Um, so when you got on the bus, um, you know, of course had your mask, had your wristband. Um, it was up to those when you got on the bus, if you wanted to go way in the back to be not near anyone or whatever, um, you had that choice. But most people who are traveling together know one another because everyone was masked and it wasn't a long ride. Well, at my bus ended up being a longer ride because we started getting into some some traffic there and it was only like 10, 15 minutes away. But um, when I when I arrived, I took it tells you to take a, you know, a Lyft or Uber, taxi, whatever to the hotel. You get to the entrance, you see the entrance of the hotel and the GPS says in one mile, I was like, one mile? <laughs> It's like, I feel like I'm in Disneyland where you, you go to a hotel and it's sit way back, but um, you know, it's a huge property. Um, but yeah, so we took the bus for that. And then for rendezvous, um, rendezvous was actually in another building, but it's on the Gaylord property. So they have these little um, like trolleys, like the little trolleys. They have those that were um, just doing loops and transporting people. So that was good. Um, and that's some, that was some really nice space to take your group out. You're still on property. It's still all through Gaylord, but you're in a totally different venue, you know, away from the big, large hotel. So that was really nice. And it has outdoor space. They did fireworks for us. Um, and then for the closing reception, we were in Arlington. So that was a longer ride. Um, you know, a lot of people have left by then, so it, the buses weren't crowded or anything, but that was a long, definitely, that's like a 30 minute ride out to there. But, you know, it's a huge, huge venue, um, lots of space. You know, again, it, it may have looked empty, but it was supposed to look empty because we're not supposed to be packed in. So, you know, nobody made a big deal like, oh, wow, nobody showed up. No, we didn't want them to show up. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't to show up, but you know, it wasn't the thing where you wanted to be packed. So it, it worked out really well. Thank so, you. and I just wanted to to, to um, give up some statistics. So, they had, according to their their stats, they had 608 people in person, um, and they had capped it based on capacity. Mm -hmm. There were 1,100 digital attendees, so a total of about 1,700 people. Mm -hmm. um, usually, they get that or more in person. Yeah. but definitely due to, due to COVID. Um, yeah. And, you know, we represented like 17 countries and multiple time zones. But that was um, surprising, 17 countries. I, I think that was the challenging on the hybrid part because the sessions started around noon Eastern time mm -hmm. and they went until five or six o'clock at night. So depending on where you're coming from, God only knows what time of day it is. Um, I know on, on the last day was Friday and I actually went to a session It was started at four or five o'clock. And one of the reasons I went was a, I knew the speaker and I felt bad for her, <laughs> she, <laughs> but there, there were about 15 or, or 20 of us in that session. And I said to her, sent her a message later. I'm like, did you know you were the last, you know, one of the last concurrent sessions? She goes, this was the second thing that she had done. And she goes, yeah, they didn't tell me about this part. Oh, they say the best for last, right? Yeah. Sure I, you know, I, yeah, I actually did do it to a couple more sessions that afternoon. Yeah. Um, I had a question for Carolyn. There was something I want to know about. Uh, no, I can't remember. It was, oh, so you were saying about how, you know, it is exhausting looking at something virtually. And that's what I was trying to figure out. Did they kind of do the virtual in chunks of time to give you enough breaks during the day? We, so we had some of that, like, but there yeah. were, there was definitely, you know, like the general session piece of it ended up being, cause it, there was, first it was some of that interview time, you know, from the studio, mm -hmm. then you would go into general session, which was probably like an hour and a half, two hours between this, this speaker and that speaker and whatever. And then there was some more interview time. So, you know, I ended up 
figuring out how to hook my computer up to the television upstairs and I was wrapping speaker gifts and mm -hmm. <laughs> things at once. Um, but it, it was, I mean, I blocked my calendar from 12 to five or six every day. Mm -hmm. um, and it was, it was, it was long um, to be in front of the, the screen. And I was glad like when on Zoom, when we went into the, the breakout sessions, I'm like, I'm not turning my camera on because I'm tired. <laughs> I'm glad they did those stretch breaks and things that you mentioned, mm -hmm. Carolyn, because moving your body certainly helps tremendously with re-energizing, but just having done an occasional day long virtual session, I don't, you know, I got to tell you, I don't know how you did it. it. For me, it would have been just like you were talking about, just completely exhausting because you're giving so much energy to it. Mm -hmm. You're just not getting that same back. Yeah. I, Moselle, Carolyn, Thank you so much for coming on, bringing your perspective, your insights, and everyone watching right now, as well as the, when the majority are going to watch the recording, please let us know if you will put it in one section of the group. And then if you want to chat your questions, we'll have Mazelle and Carolyn take a peek at that and be able to reply back to you. Or let me know if you have any additional questions and uh, you're just trying to get some information out there to help each and every one of you to be able to move, move forward successfully in creating engaging events in multiple formats. Thank you so much. We really appreciate you all. You're welcome. Thanks, Thank Thanks. you. Bye. Have a good meeting, Carolyn. Thanks. <laughs>